So the, this webinar is how to deliver S1000D on an IETP platform direct from PTC Windchill. So I'm going to be talking about our Viewpoint product. So just a short introduction on GPSL. We are a company that specializes in content management and content solutions. We're, we were established in 2006, and we kind of have people all over with offices in the UK, the US, Australia, and India. So what we're talking about with the demonstration today is taking a digital thread from the engineering parts and running it through parts lists, through parts catalogs, through the service content and bringing it all the way out into the field, into delivery. So having one single thread that runs through everything. So your CADs and windchill, you take that information and you drive it down through EBOMs and SBOMs in, into parts lists, into data modules, ultimately into manuals, and then you want to deliver those manuals out into the field. So when we're talking about viewpoint, we're positioning this as a product to get that information out into that field, to bring all of these different data points together and then actually put them out there for someone to consume them because it's nice to have it all nice and connected in windchill, but then what do you do with it? How do you get it out to your consumer? So I'm going to show you some images, some ICNs, some data modules in Windchill very briefly, and then how they kind of render in viewpoint, how you would show them to your actual users. So I'm gonna switch to a video that has been kind of cut up for time and simplicity. If there's any functionality in here that you want to see more of, we can set up a session to dig a little deeper. The windshield portion of this has been chopped up pretty thin because this is not a windshield demo. The purpose of this is to just show the data residing on the windshield side so that you can see how it's reflected later in viewpoint. But assuming a lot of people already are familiar with windshield, I didn't want to spend a lot of time dwelling there. So we'll start with the ICN in Windchill. So if we go ahead and view that information, this is, this is my reference point. This is my breadcrumb is this image right here, this dual grip. So we see it here, living in Windchill as our publication graphic with all its metadata. You can see where it is. Now we're gonna go ahead and open that same thing up in Arbor Text. So if we scroll up through the data module, there's my breadcrumb again. There's my image again. We can see it in the context of the data module. You can see in the code here that this image has hotspot data. So when we get a little bit further, we'll see how those hotspots render in viewpoint. So if I move down to my publication structure, it's my actual manual in Windchill. So in Windchill, I can have my data modules reside in an information structure, which is where they're hanging off of the actual SNS. But when I want to actually publish out my information, that's gonna be on the publication structure or the manual. So in the publication manual, our publication structure, the data modules are hanging in the manuals. So if I open up maintenance manual or operators manual, we'll see a couple data modules. And then if I open illustrated parts catalog, that's where my ICN is. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish out the full, full manual. 
from here I could do PDF, but obviously I'm going to send this out to viewpoint to view the item. So switching over to viewpoint, it has user sign in. So the user sign in is going to contain your bookmarks, the manuals that are in your library. When we come to the main page, this has all the manuals in my library. So in PDF or item format. And from here, I can access anything in my library, search my library, go through my bookmarks or access my saved sessions. So I'm gonna search the library first. There's a basic search, which is just a keyword search, or I can do a more advanced search where I can use modifiers or kind of scale down my search. If I just search for the word wheel, that's gonna search all the publications for the word wheel. So the results, if I hover over the title, or they're gonna show me the publication and the data module. If I hover over the title, it's gonna show me the applicability for each entry. If I click full view, it'll open up the full item. If I click just the title, it'll give me the IDNS viewer. The keyword I used will show up as highlighted in the content. Then if I look at bookmarks, these are bookmarks that I have manually created. If I wanted to come back to a certain point in the content, if I were to click one, load it, it would just open that point in the manual. So if I launch my publication, this opens a typical IEDA view where I have my table of contents on the left and my content on the right. And most of this is defined in how it's built during the building process. So um, the table of contents has multiple options. So this authored one looks like it did in Windchill, what we just looked at. But if I go ahead and open the drop list, I can switch it to the system drill down, I can go to the parts, and that's all set up as I'm building it. So if I expand some, I hover over, I can again kind of get a preview of the applicability, some additional data, Now, if I go to the menu at the bottom, I can see that no values are set on applicability currently. Applicability is set at the manual level, even when we're talking about inline applicability. So if I wanted to adjust the applicability for the gunner station, that's gonna apply to the whole book the, at the work package level, or sorry, data module level, and also in line. So when I switch it to single grip, it has removed those two work packages we just looked at that were dual grip. If I go ahead and flip it back and change it to dual grip and apply, those two work packages are going to come back. So if we go into one of these work packages, at the top we have our references. These are links which will launch the target data module in an IDNS viewer. When we come down through to parts, every part number will give you kind of a quick search which pre-populates the search dialog with that part number. And then it'll show you every instance of that part in the manual. This one only has one, but if it appeared in multiple places, you'd get a link to each of those.
we come back, as we come down into the content, every time you see a tool, you can hover over and get a tool tip with information about the tool. If you click it, it will jump you up to the table at the top of the data module. If you click a figure link, it will open up the image pane and you're gonna see a familiar figure that we just were looking at. In the image pane, we can manipulate the image with some basic tools. We can zoom in and out, toggle the background. If there were hotspots, we could highlight them. Some additional zooming. So that kind of covers basic viewing. If we wanted to print, we can print from the data module, but it's important to note that this is not leveraging an S1000D style sheet. Instead, this is leveraging the browser print. So your destination is gonna be anything configured. If you had a network printer here, that would be available here. So this is your viewing mode. This is how you kind of browse content in viewpoint. Now, if we were executing content in viewpoint, we could talk about sessions. So sessions are a way to kind of save your place and return to something. They can either be auto-saved if you're interrupted on the system, or you can save them deliberately and they'll show up here in your session manager off of the main page. You come here and if you select your session, you can restore it and return to where you were without having to navigate back through the book. So if I open up a data module in execute mode, it looks different because it's more interactive. I'm making choices with the content and my choices are changing how I move through the data module and they're also being recorded on the back end. So as I move through each question, I can make a choice, I can make an input that affects how I'm gonna move through. A different choice brings me to a different step. My choice is then recorded on the back end. So as I click through and I'm navigated through, I might have to refer to another data module. When I click the link, it launches the target and then I execute through that. I walk through those as steps as well. They may not have the same choices, but the fact that I've moved through the steps is still recorded on the back end as being completed. Now, if I wanna check my status at any time, this will kind of show me what's being recorded. I can see that I've completed the referenced data module and it shows me the steps that I've completed, the start time, the end time. I can also go back and make changes as I'm still in the session and I can suspend my session again, and it'll show up in my session manager. Coming back to my manual, I can switch to the ICN and look at the data we were looking at in Windchill. We have our familiar image again, our breadcrumb where we started. And now we can kind of see those hotspots we were looking at at ArborText and how they render in viewpoint. So as I click on the hotspots in the image, they're highlighted in the table, but the linking is bi-directional. If I click them in the table, they're also highlighted in the image. This is the same image pane that we saw in the other data module with the same sort of controls. I can kind of annotate the text or the image with text. Highlight certain parts. Turn it on, off. 
and clear it out. If at any point I wanted to print this off, I could print the image marked up, could save the session for the next person working the same level. So that is a pretty quick and high level run through of how you can take your S1000D data that lives in Windchill and you can push it out and see it in viewpoint. So what we're talking about with viewpoint is having an Aiden viewer that's integrated with Windchill that allows you to take all of that connected data and actually get it out to the field, to your users. So you're actually getting something out of the digital thread. It supports S1000D and MIL standard content delivery, online or offline. It can be configured either way. And so it's available for your users. So that is what I have. So Kate, we can go ahead and switch it over to Q&A. Great, thank you, Christina. Um, so we have had a couple of questions um, pop up in the Q&A. Uh, the first one is, um, is there an API for Viewpoint to connect to an ERP or MES system? Yes, Viewpoint can be configured with APIs to connect to other systems. Okay, um, and then also, um, can Viewpoint operate in an offline mode? Yes, it can be configured to operate offline, and then it's just a matter of connecting to get updated manuals. Um, and then this one, I think you've probably covered, but can Viewpoint support other standards um, other than S1000D? Yes, I believe it's MIL standard 3001 out of the box, but others could be configured. Lovely. Uh, and then, um, is Viewpoint new software? And if not, how long has it been available on the market? I am going to push that question over to Jeff. Yeah, so um, Viewpoint is not new software. It's new in the commercial market, but it's been around in the, um, in the government market for a long time. Uh, it was uh, popular and still used in in the Navy. Um, so it's been been tested, vetted. Um, uh, security obviously is, is also that there as well to be installed and used on government systems. So um, so the back end of Viewpoint has been used for a long time. Really what we have here is just a, a reskin, if you will, for a more a more commercial audience. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the this is not alpha or beta software it's 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 been around for some some time now great thanks jeff uh, and then we have uh, in my old lbs csdb suite i had ietp output capability included is viewpoint uh is your viewpoint app any relation to what i had included in my old lbs csdb That was a lot of question. Can you say that again? Yeah. Uh, so in my old LBS CSDB suite, I had IETP output capability. Mm -hmm. um, does this viewpoint app have any relation to what was included in that old LBS CSDB suite? I see. Yeah. So this is an entirely different application. So it's not like born out of the LBS IETP. So it's going to be different than than that. You may see a lot of the same functionality in there. IETPs are sort of a standard, and you have a lot of the same standard fun functionality there. Um, if you're currently using LBS, you could take that S1000D content, and it, it would go in into Viewpoint. You know what we showed here was an in integration with Windchill and our S1000D for Windchill product, but Viewpoint is an S1000D viewer that can stand on its own. So it's not. Um, it doesn't have any ties to the LP, LBS IETP, but it could take data from LBS. So that's still the application that you're on and um, that could be presented inside of Viewpoint. Great, thanks Jeff. Um, and another one, uh, is Viewpoint capable of capturing analytics such as when a task is done and by whom? Yes, that sort of stuff is 
captured on the back end, especially when you're doing execute, when you're executing a data module, all of the different actions are kind of recorded. So everything you do in viewpoint is recorded on the back end. So there's an, an audit trail of everything that's occurred in there. Yes. yes. So it basically captures all, everything, every activity in viewpoint is captured in an XML file, uh, sort of saved on the back end. And then you can use that XML file any way that, that you want to. It's kind of similar to the a, API question. So it's, it's made to be open enough to where you can take that information and being XML, you can incorporate that or dissect it however you need to, uh, however you need to process it. Um, and we have, uh... Another question come in um, regarding security. Uh, so are individual users managed using a unique sign-in? Yeah, so access control is highly configurable inside of Windshield. Um, I'm sorry, inside of Viewpoint. Uh, it can be um, custom, it can be tied to your uh, LDAP servers. And then when you sign in, um, the environment that you see is dependent upon who is signed in. So if you have different environments within Viewpoint, you can see different things or not see different things. It can be tailored by um, the manuals that are shown. It can be tailored by the, the, the content that's shown inside of there. Uh, even the look and feel uh, can change depending upon who is signed in. So, um, you know, there are some customers that may, you know, might be serving data to different audiences and they want to have a different branding, a, you know, a different color scheme and things like lot like that. Uh, if a technician, you know, works on certain types of content, but not others, that uh, content can be tailored depending on what they're concerned with. Um, we are pretty much out of time. So unless anyone has a final question. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, does the viewer does the viewpoint viewer license have a limit on how many users? No. So the licensing, that's probably a different discussion, but it depends on, on how you want to architect it. Um, for the, there's a, a license for the builder. Um, and that would accommodate, I think, up to five people. One is just, it's really just for, for testing and making sure things ran through the builder correctly to kind of give you a, a preview beep before it goes out. And then most of our clients want to really work with it in an offline mode, which would be sort of a one-to-one -to, -one to the tied to the machine. And obviously, you know, if you've got several people working at a kiosk or on some, or, or on a, a, a tough book, I mean, multiple people can be, uh, can be on that. So the, the licensing from a serialization point of view for offline would, would be tied to the, um, to, to the hardware uh, that would be supporting the viewer. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thanks, Christina um, and Jeff for your input with the Q&As. Um, I, as I said, will send this recording out to everybody tomorrow. Um, if you do have any further questions, feel free to either reach out directly to me and I can forward them onto the team. Um, or if you obviously already have the team's contact details, by all means, reach out to them direct. Um, and yes, thank you everyone for attending. Um, hopefully it was useful. And please do let us know if you would like a follow-up session or to see anything in more detail um, after the event. Thank you all. Yep, thanks all.